Okay, so I'm going to have a look at some essential exam questions for IB standard level uh, graphing, uh, especially to do with trig functions. So here's the first question. Uh, we're given the graph uh, y equals p cos qx plus r. We're given the domain for x, and then we have to find what p, q, and r are. Now, this is a pretty typical question. Um, we'll do it one step at a time. The best thing to do first is to find out the amplitude, then we can find the period, and then we'll leave r till last. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we have a look, and we can see that the maximum point is here, where y is 7. The minimum point is when y is minus 3. Therefore, the difference between the maximum and the minimum is 10. And then to find the amplitude, we just halve this number. So if we halve 10, then we would get an amplitude of 5. But unfortunately, this question, it's slightly different because we've, we've been told that it's a cos x function, but therefore the, we should be having the maximum point starting up here, whereas actually we've got a minimum point on the axis instead. So therefore, we need to actually have a reflection uh, in the x-axis. So therefore, p is going to be negative 5 rather than 5. The negative reflects in the x-axis. So that would be the first bit. So we get p is minus 5. Secondly, let's work out what the period is going to be. Well, the period of the graph, if we work out that this is 0 minus 3, and we know that the maximum point is at 4, 7, so by uh, symmetry, we know that the minimum point, again, is going to be 8, because the difference between the, the minimum and the maximum is 4, then there must be another 4 to give us to the minimum again. So therefore, we know that the period of the graph is 8, and then we use this little formula, the period equals 2 pi over q. Remember, we're not specified, so we're going to be in radians, so in radians, unless they tell us otherwise. So period is 2 pi over q. Period is 8, so 8 is 2 pi over q, therefore if we rearrange this we get q is pi over 4. Okay, and the last thing that we need to do is to say that, um, well what's happened? So we, we, we worked out that the amplitude was negative 5, so we do a little sketch of what uh, the cos graph would look like, and it would go between negative 5 and 5, and it would look something like that. But if we actually look at our real graph, well, it's starting at negative 3, the y value, and we've got it at negative 5. Uh, and therefore, we need to move up this graph by 2, therefore r must be 2. So our final graph is going to be y equals minus 5 cos pi over 4x plus 2. Okay, let's have a look at another question, very similar. Here's another graph, this time it's a sine graph, this time we've also got some sort of translation uh, as well, horizontal. And as before, we're given a maximum point and we're given a minimum point. Okay, so same as before, let's uh, work out what the amplitude is first. The maximum point, the y value is 12, the minimum point uh, we've got uh, y value of minus 4, therefore the total distance is 16, divide by 2, we get 8. Okay, straightforward. As before, we need to work out what the period is. From the graph, we can see that the period is going to be 8. As before, we can use symmetry to see the difference between the maximum and the minimum is 4. Double it to get 8. And as before, we get 8 equals 2 pi over b. And as before, we, we also get b equals pi over 4. Okay, so we've got what a is, we've got what b is. Um, to find out what c is, it's probably best or it's easiest to kind of draw this midpoint here. We've got the sine graph, and we know that the sine graph, the midpoint starts at uh, the y-axis. And if we look at this and we can see, well, this midpoint here is moved along by 2. Now, if it's moved along by 2, and we've got it's minus c, so therefore c is going to be 2, because when it's minus 2, it moves to the right by 2. It's the opposite of what you'd expect. So therefore, we've translated it by 2, 0, therefore we do have c equals 2 here. And then lastly, um, we need to find out what we've moved it up by to find out what d is. As before, we do a little sketch. We worked out the amplitude is 8. That takes us between minus 8 and 8. But then we look at this. Well, we're going all the way up to 12. Therefore, how do we get from 8 to 12? 
we add 4. Therefore, we found all the values. Okay, and last one. Here we go. So we've got a cos graph. Uh, here's the graph that's given. Again, we're given a maximum and a minimum value. So let's put some of that data on. Uh, we've got this information here. We know the maximum point is this point here. That's 29. And that's when t is 3. And then the minimum point, again, when t is 9. So we know the difference between the maximum and the minimum is 6. So therefore, we add another 6 onto that. Then we're going to get the full period of the graph. So if we've got 6 plus 6, the period is 12. As before, we use the same period formula. 12 equals 2 pi over b. So b equals 2 pi over 12, or pi over 6. Amplitude, okay, again, very similar. Maximum 29, uh, the minimum was uh, 15. Therefore, the amplitude, well, that distance is 14. Divided by 2, amplitude is 7. Two more things to look at. Look at the translation. Well, this time we've got a cos graph. Well, cos graph should be starting with a maximum on the y-axis, but it's been moved across by 3. It's been translated by 3. But again, we've got a minus c here, so therefore c is 3, because remember, minus 3 moves it to the right. Okay, so therefore we've got c is equal to 3. And the very last one, same as before, we worked out that the amplitude was 7, but 7 cos x is going to get between 7 and minus 7, but we've actually got a maximum all the way at 29. How do you get from 7 to 29? We need to add 22. So there we go, we've got three very similar kind of questions, all to do with trig graphs.